Hi, this is Pete Lyons with Let's Play Salesforce, and in this Einstein Analytics video, we're going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to filter by does not contain in Einstein Analytics dashboards. Uh, so this is a feature that we've had in standard Salesforce reporting since I don't even know how long, uh, but we don't have it in analytics. It has been on the idea exchange for a couple of years. Uh, we will probably get it eventually, and the fact that we don't have it currently probably indicates that there is some sort of uh, heavy technical lift that would be necessary in order to deliver this. Uh, but rest assured, the product team listens. Uh, they know this is something that we're looking for, and they are trying to get it for us. But in the meantime, I have created a marvelously hacky workaround for you. So this starts in the data flow editor. And what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to create a data set that contains one row for each of the values in the field that I want to put my does not contain filter on. Uh, if you wanted to do this for multiple fields, you would actually want to branch this out and have a different compute all coming off of your original source node and then append them all back together so that your final data set would have all of the different fields that you wanted to filter by with one row for each and then just make sure that you know the, the rest of the values all get cleaned up and, and there's a little bit of a chore there, but uh, this example is just doing it for one field. Uh, so pretty straightforward data flow. We're going to get our opportunities. We're grabbing ID and stage name. We need ID as a unique identifier so that we can deduplicate and create a data set that has one row per stage. So then we're going to use the compute relative. We're partitioning by stage name so that everything's lumped together and we're going to order it by ID. Now the SQL on this is pretty simple. Case when my ID equals the first ID, then keep it else drop it end. And this is going to flag one row per stage. So this is very similar. If you've seen my video on uh, using compute relative to deduplicate data sets, we're doing the exact same thing there. Uh, then filter dupes, we just say uh, get first ID as the source. And if that flag equals keep, we're going to keep the rows. Otherwise, they're going. Then we just register that data set. So now we're going to hop over into our dashboard editor and see how we actually implement this. So we're going to need a reference step, and we're basically going to do some flippy changey action here. So first, I've got my real data set where I want to group by stage, and I need to put a dummy placeholder filter on here. So I'm ultimately, I need a does not contain, so I'm going to put it on stage, but I'm not going to do contains. I'm going to do does not equal, and it doesn't matter which value I put in here, I just need a placeholder. So now I'm going to go ahead and click Add, hit Done, put this guy on the screen somewhere in the range of here, nice and big so we can see it. And for now, that's all we need to do with this step. Next, we're going to create a step on our stages data set. And we're going to likewise group this by stage and see that we did get that one row per row. And we're just going to hit Done. So let's get this guy on the page here. And remember that uh, this is coming from stage name one on our opportunity data set. And this is coming from stage name two, which is on our stages data set, our reference data set that we've created for the purpose of filtration. Okay, so how am I gonna get the values that are shown here to not be the values that are shown here? And also, what is with this ID decision makers value that is not found in both? Well, uh, the ID decision makers value, what we're seeing here is actually data drift uh, because I have a value or I have at least one row in the org that's in this value. And uh, I don't have that on my data set because I haven't run this data flow in like a bajillion years because it's a dev org. Uh, so, you know, you want to avoid data drift with this sort of thing. Otherwise, it's not going to work correctly. And the best way to do that is to have both of these data sets being registered by the same data flow, which is going to keep them in sync. So again, uh, now stage one, stage two, how are we going to pass these values over? Well, we've already got this uh, not in filter right here. So we're going to need to replace this closed one value with a binding. So bindings need to be in quotes and open curly, double curl, uh, open double curly, close double curly, and then put in column dot as object. And column has two arguments. So put in the comma. The first argument is going to be our step name, and we've already got stage name one right here. So why don't we just conveniently copy pasta this down and say stage name two, which is the one from the other step, and we need the result, and then so. Uh, 
The second argument of column takes the list of columns that you want to pull over with your binding. We've only got one, but it still needs to be passed in an array because it takes more than one. And then the field name needs to be enclosed in uh, escaped quotes. So column stage name to dot result comma stage name in an array dot as object all up in double curlies and not in there. So what it's going to say is whatever I'm currently getting out of stage name two, I don't want that thing. Oh, and it didn't work. Oh, well, actually, good to point out. So the reason for this error is because what's actually being returned by this, because uh, we do have multiple values in that column, it's returning an array. So previously, we had an array of values. And now we're just one too many layers deep with our square brackets. So we delete those square brackets. And there we go. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, no results found. He screwed up twice in the same video. Oh, well, that's where you're wrong. I screwed up dozens of times and just had to keep re-recording. No, these are actually the no results that we are trying to find. And that is because every value is listed on the right. Therefore, we should see no values on the left. So moving along now, we need to grab a global filter. And this needs to be on our stage data set, not our opportunity data set and we're going to create it on stage. And the reason that we don't want to use a list filter is because then we can have this nice contains value here. But just a quick test, if I select close lost and close one, now we see that's all I have on the right and that's all that's missing from the left. But again, we still do need to address that problem that when the end user logs in, this is all they're going to see, no results found. And that's not what we want them to see. So we need to put a placeholder in. So I do contains, and then this should be something to indicate that we're at a starting point, like maybe no results, or you know, I'm just gonna do. But the most important thing uh, is that this value should not actually be contained with any of it. So don't you know put in temp if you've got temp in the in the fields, you know, the values themselves. So now we have this nice starting point where it actually has a value. It's not true for any of these records. So none of them are getting filtered out. We can even get rid of our reference step here and we'll see that it does still work uh, perfectly well. So for example, um, I have three stages that have PRO in them. I have prospecting, proposal price quote, and value proposition. So if I was to do contains pro, I would expect that those three should disappear. Oh look, there they did. Uh, if I didn't want to see anything that contained the word closed. And there it goes. So uh, we've accomplished what we set out to do. We now have the ability to filter a dashboard uh, by does not contain. And we don't have to write miles and miles of SQL to do it. We can do it with just one binding and a little bit of data flow shenanigans. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, tell a friend. And as always, thanks for watching.